Hi, welcome to the Portsmouth Travel and Tourism Show. My name is Dave Schulte, Tourism Manager for the City of Portsmouth. In today's show, we're going to visit two arts attractions that bring people to Old Town from all over Hampton Roads and the region. First, we'll visit the Commodore Theater, a grand old art deco theater that's been restored to its 1940s glory. Then we'll visit the gallery shop at the Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center to find artistic treasures created by local and regional artists. Then we'll finish today's show with a look at a new video that talks about all there is to see and do in Portsmouth. Hi there. My name is Fred Schoenfeld. I'm the owner of the Commodore Theater. We're located in historic Old Town, Portsmouth, Virginia. We are a historic 1945 Art Deco motion picture theater that operated as a downtown theater from November 1945 through November 1975. Closed in November 75, sat vacant for 12 years. I purchased the theater in the summer of 1987 and began the long process of restoring the theater back to its original splendor. However, we made a change. We decided to put a full service restaurant on the main floor. The reason for that was the whole movie business had changed over the course of the last 40 or 50 years. And people now were looking to do more than just see a movie. Food service obviously was where the money was in the movie business from day one. However, most theaters up until the mid 80s were just serving your traditional popcorn, candy and soft drinks. So my concept was to integrate a full service restaurant right in the auditorium. Therefore, folks who would go out on their Friday or Saturday night evening date could now combine to the elements that most people were doing, which was having a meal and then going to see a movie. The advantage to that is that we get the proceeds from both the food as well as the tickets. Most people don't realize, but in the movie business, all movie theaters pay a very large percentage of the tickets price goes right to the Hollywood studio. Most films today get anywhere from 50 to 70 percent of the ticket price. Therefore, the theater owners were not left with that much of a profit. However, with food service, it's traditional in the restaurant business for the operator of a restaurant to keep two-thirds as gross profit. Obviously, that's not what they put in their pocket, but that's what we call gross profit, which allows them to actually end up with proceeds of the food, which goes to pay not only staff, but the upkeep of the facility. Here at the Commodore, we try to make our food very reasonably priced. It's all made in-house. We're one of the only theaters we know of in the entire region that actually uses real butter on the popcorn. We also pop it in coconut oil, which is the original oil that popcorn was first popped in over 100 years ago. We have an evening show every night that begins at 7. We seat for dinner at 545. We show first-run films, in other words, films that are brand new. We're also the only THX certified theater in this part of the state. THX is a process that George Lucas of Star Wars fame came up with back in the 80s. And the interesting story about THX is that we actually enlisted their technical staff from California came here when we were doing all the restoration work and helped me design the theater to meet their standards, which are many. They include the equipment, they include the acoustics of the room, stray light from an exit sign is not allowed in the auditorium. You cannot have your heating or air conditioning units audible. 
and on and on. The bottom line is the presentation that we present and the whole experience is the best of any theater in the world. And there's only about five to 600 theaters we know of that are certified THX. And what I tell my guest is that presentation that you'll see and experience here is the best of any theater in the country. We also have the ability to have live uh, performances. We've had seven weddings in the auditorium. We also have had at least a dozen concerts here. But primarily we are a first run motion picture dinner theater. We were very fortunate in the early 90s to be placed on the Virginia Landmarks Register and the National Register of Historic Places, which is done by the U.S. Park Service. So we are a national landmark, and as such, we are protected by federal and state code. Interesting story about not just Portsmouth, but many small towns across this country back in the 30s and 40s. Prior to television, the only source of news was radio, newspapers, or newsreels. And if you wanted to see actually a moving image, you had to go to a movie theater. And that was the popular form of entertainment in the 30s and 40s. At one time, in downtown Portsmouth alone, there were at least nine movie theaters. There was one or two in every block, from Effingham to Water Street. They were first run, second run, and third run theaters. Many of the theaters only ran a film for two or three days. And the newsreels were the main popular item of the time because you could go in and watch a 10-minute newsreel and see images of overseas wars or images that you could not see anywhere else. The popular theaters were attended sometimes once or twice a week. Many people would go to the movies at least twice a week because at that time the admission was only 10 cents and you could go out and have a bite to eat at a neighboring restaurant and then come see not only the newsreel but a popular feature. Beginning in June of 1987, the theater had been closed for 12 years. Luckily, the interior was still pretty much intact. All the original movie theater seats were here, the projection equipment was here. And my task was to redesign the theater with two elements in mind. Number one, try to restore the theater back to the original look and feel of 1945. However, number two was to incorporate a full service restaurant within the auditorium. In order to do that, we would come to work every day and decide what had to be done that day. It was no way that we could have projected out from day one how we were going to accomplish the work. I use the analogy of an archaeological dig. When you go on an ancient site, you don't know what you're going to find. That was the same elements we ran into here at the Commodore, in that every day was a new adventure. Because I had an idea where I wanted to go, but I had no way of knowing at that time how I was going to get there. Originally, I had projected a nine-month window to do the work. We ended up spending 29 months, and even at that point, when we opened in Christmas of 1989, the first floor restaurant was not complete. We had to still work on it, and we did not start serving food in our main floor dining area until July of 1990. Our balcony was used for the first six months where we had our traditional movie theater food of popcorn, candy, and soft drinks available. In our outer lobby are two very interesting pieces of equipment. On the left is a black simplex projector. 
with a carbon arc lamp house. Prior to the 1980s, the light source was carbon arc rods, very similar to what you see welders using when they weld. The lamp house was hot, it was dirty, and it required constant maintenance to keep the carbon rods set up properly. The film were run on 15 to 20 minute reels, therefore every theater would have a minimum of two projectors side by side. The projectionist was constantly busy threading up film, what was called changeover, switching from reel one to reel two, having to reload the other projector, reset the carbons, and switch from reel two to reel three, and that went on for the entire show. The machine that we have was here in the theater when I bought the theater in 1987. However, it does predate the theater because it was actually built, we think, in the early 1930s. On the right side is a 16 millimeter projector that I acquired in 1965 from the World's Fair, which was held on Long Island in New York. It was at the AT&T Pavilion and it was used to show what was called circle vision. It was one of 18 projectors in a 360 degree circle. They showed a two minute movie that you could walk in this huge room and look anywhere in a complete circle and see a movie. It was a novelty at the time and the equipment at the end of the World's Fair was surplus and I was able to obtain two projectors from Bell Telephone Company and install them when I was in school at the University of Cincinnati and we set a theater up. And the interesting thing is that the theater I set up in 1965 ran on campus for 35 years. In 2000 the equipment was again surplus by the university and I reacquired my original projectors and they are now on display here at the Commodore. Art Deco, it was a design of buildings that started in the early 1930s. It was very prominent in many movie theaters and we were fortunate that the Commodore was designed by a very famous architect, John Zink, Z-I-N-K. Mr. Zink was a Baltimore architect who did many theaters up and down the East Coast. And the theater was designed in the early to mid part of 1944 and was completed in November of 1945. Two of his theaters still exist, so if you're in the Baltimore area, there is the Senator Theater, which is still operating, which is the twin sister of this theater, as well as the Uptown Theater, which is in Northwest DC. Again, that's an operating theater. And going in those theaters, you will see a lot of the elements that he incorporated in this theater. We also have a very large balcony, which was very prominent of Art Deco design. And our balcony seats 318. Our main floor originally sat over 500 people. However, when we converted to dining, we did have to cut the capacity down, but we do seat 190 in our dining area. We have 58 tables that seat two, three, or four people. We're operating seven days a week. We have afternoon shows, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And during the summer, or when school is not in session, we add a Thursday, Friday afternoon performance. But we are here seven days a week for evening shows. Dinner starts usually around 5.45 and the film is on the screen by seven o'clock. Want to show your Portsmouth pride? Visit the Portsmouth Visitor Center to find all kinds of clothing and merchandise that proudly bears the Portsmouth logo. The Visitor Center is located in Old Town at North Harbor, next to the Renaissance Hotel. The staff will be happy to help you plan your visit and help you pick out clothing and gifts. Here you will find sweatshirts, t-shirts, fleece, caps, and all kinds of sportswear and gifts to show off your Portsmouth pride. The Visitor Center is open daily from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please stop by to say hello. Old Town Portsmouth is home to many specialty shops that draw visitors from all over the region. 
The uh, gallery shop at the Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center is a place where you can find artistic treasures created by local and regional artists. Let's go there now to visit with the gallery manager, Lyona Borjo. Hi, I'm Lyona Borjo. I am the manager, Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center Gallery Shop, 420 High Street, Portsmouth, Virginia. So welcome, welcome to our shop. Um, I'll give you a little bit of history of our building. We are in Old Town, Portsmouth. Portsmouth, um, obviously, uh, 1762 for our church, Trinity across the street, the city on its own with William Crawford, 1752. Our building, 1890. It was the county clerk's office. Next door, Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center, was built in 1846 as the courthouse. Not the first courthouse in town, but 1846 till 1962. So our building, 1890, has a completely different architecture to it with the brickwork on the outside and also too with our wonderful ceiling, which is also reminiscent of the ceiling at St. John's Church down the street. Now what we do here is we are associated with um, an art and cultural center, which is next door there, an art gallery with changing exhibits. What we try to do here is also promote that art and bring in more local artists. I have currently at this time about 52 local artists in a, just a range of genres. We have uh, the potters and we have uh, glass makers and I have someone who's doing woodworking. We have a lot of jewelry, of course, um, origami, paper arts, textiles, um, hats, scarves that sort of thing, so that we can you know, buy local, support local with our artists. Now our artists also um, have to come in every couple of months. They change out their artwork. So it's going to be something different in here pretty much every single day. So if you like the artwork from one particular artist, but it's not something that you want now, come back in a couple of weeks because there'll be something else from that artist in here as well. So that just really keeps it fresh. Um, at times when we are able to, there will be an exhibit at the Art and Cultural Center next door. If there is some extra bit of work from an artist over there, or sometimes even more than one artist, um, as we had done with our Outsider Art Exhibit, I like to try and put that art in the shop to uh, maybe have it uh, available to them. We'll try to use the Art Center as like, you know, the gateway piece. Um, for the larger pieces of artwork at a certain price point. In the shop, it will be, you know, very similar artwork and maybe perhaps a lower price point. So it's something that, you know, is a little bit more accessible to the average person. So we try to um, incorporate as much art from an ongoing exhibit next door at the gallery over here into um, our particular shop. Um, I also like to, same on the same artist vein, is bring in um, fair trade items. Um, fair trade, we do a lot of um, baskets, textiles, um, jewelry, that sort of thing. And I've been working with different um, fair trade wholesalers to try and touch different areas of the world. So we have currently have fair trade from, say, Central America. I have some from some Asian countries, uh, Thailand, Bangladesh, um, Africa. I have lots of great um, hand-carved soapstone from Africa. So we're trying to um, get pieces from different parts of the world so that we're supporting artists in these developing countries. So once again, it's base, it is, it's supporting the arts. That's what we like to do here. Um, we also have some items, I'll call them, you know, like little pickup gifts that I'll buy from wholesale purveyors. And I'm constantly shopping, love to shop. So constantly shopping, bringing in new pieces, um, hostess gifts, birthday gifts, that sort of thing. I have a wide selection of art cards from our local artists. So this is, you know, for anywhere from four to seven dollars, you can get a print of their artwork on a blank card, which is great because that becomes a gift in itself because you can take the cards and frame them. Um, I have an artist who does our origami. He does cards for us and it's original origami. So you're getting original art in a card. So we are, you know, really there for gift giving, which is great. So the wholesalers, local artists, um, and also our fair trade artists as well. Now, back to this building. 
County Clerk's Office, 1890, Portsmouth, a lot of history. Uh, there's a section here in the shop that is a history section for us. And I have a number of books, um, most of them local authors. Once again, buy local, support local. So we've got a lot of local authors that have written history. We have um, Underground Railroad, we have uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, we have a number of Portsmouth history books um, for all types. Some have a little bit more pictures, some are just a tome of text, um, a coffee table size. Um, there's even um, a cookbook. Everyone who contributed to the cookbook was local. So that's interesting. So there's you can get your history as well. We have a whole section for that. And we have another section that has some logo items um, for some historic um, places or areas here, Lightship Portsmouth, um, the Naval Hospital, the original building for that, Quarters A over at the shipyard, and of course, the Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center, which again was the, uh, the courthouse built in 1846. So we have some logo items that you can take with you as well. Oh, and we did one for Trinity Church too, because they're right across the street and they're, they're part of our, our corner here for the, the historic part of, of Old Town Portsmouth. We also do programming here in the back of our building, so we're not just a shop. We have an extra area that was added on well after 1890, and um, we will do workshops. We've had clay workshops. We are doing right now an ongoing bonsai workshop. We have um, rehearsals for um, children's um, musical areas, the Rhythm Project. They rehearse back here. Um, Children's Museum will do summer camps for the kids back there. When the weather is not so wonderful outside and we have our first Fridays um, beginning in the spring through the fall, we move everything inside to our annex area. So we'll have all the music and the food and beverage for the first Fridays during the season um, in the back here because as you know, it can rain. So we just, we use that for programming. Um, it's been rented out for weddings and that sort of thing. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good space. We also have that space filled with art as well. There um, is some hand-carved wood art that was donated by one of our artists, and also the um, teachers and students from Churchland High School Art Program have painted a mural back there. So it's still art. Now we have some wonderful pottery from a local artist. She lives in Hampton. Her name is Desiree Darton. Desiree has been part of our shop since the very beginning. She is an amazing gal. She would, at a time, her job as a veterinarian took her to the northern part of Virginia. She would drive down to visit her family and take time out of her day to come and you know change out her artwork. What is amazing about Desiree's work, it is oven safe, microwave safe, and dishwasher safe. Everything revolves around food. And she has, she tests every single piece of her pottery for functionality and to ensure the food safety and of course, for everyone who has a really busy life, such as herself, that you can put it in the oven and the microwave and the dishwasher. Her colors are extremely vibrant. She also will, in a lot of her pieces um, of her pottery, which it's all functional, by the way, she'll sometimes have a little hidden, like an Easter egg. So on the lid of a coffee pot, you'll open up the coffee pot, she'll have maybe have drawn a, a dog's face into the pottery or a kitty face or something like that. She will, in the bottom of a mug, do a hand form of some little creature. So in a lot of her work, there's these wonderful little pieces of her personality. And when you touch her work, you can really feel that. Um, obviously, her love of food and her love of, of animals and just how giving she is. And it's great to have her back in the area. Hampton is much closer than Northern Virginia or Maryland, where she was. So we get to change out her work more often. And it's just, it's our pleasure and our privilege to really have Desiree Darden as, as one of our artists. 
Another artist who is fantastic and does a lot of our programming for us, especially during the Winter Wonderland season, is Rich Gray. He's our origami artist. I believe I had mentioned him earlier about the original art cards. Well, along with the original art cards, he does um, earrings and necklaces, and he's also been working on what he calls deconstructed, reconstructed. I don't have any samples of this at this time, but um, it's paper bowls, functional paper bowls, where he has laid it out in his mind as the engineer that he is, and de totally deconstructed the bowl to a flat surface and put it back together again. So those pieces are fascinating, but um, his, the earrings and the art cards that we have for him are absolutely phenomenal. And just, it is also a great privilege to have him here because he takes time out of his day during Winter Wonderland, more than one day, to do um, make and take art origami for the folks at Winter Wonderland. So we really enjoy having him here. His wife also does pottery for us, Pam Gray. So maybe we'll take a little look at some of her artwork as well. Once again, all functional. She's all about the food and the, the cooking and that sort of thing. So we have Pam Gray's pottery here. Pam also teaches. Along the lines of our continuing to buy local, support local, support local, we actually have a couple of employees in the museum's department that are extremely talented that uh, do consign their work with us here in the gallery shop. One of them is uh, Stephen Grinnett, is currently doing watercolor and colored pencil combinations in a mixed media for some beautiful, beautiful wall art. And you'll be able to see some of his work not only here in our shop, but also over at a, a show in the World Trade Center in Norfolk in March. So a contribution for one of our um, employees. Also Sabrina Piper, who works at the Children's Museum as a supervisor. She does the most amazing, intricate, beaded jewelry. I do not know how she comes up with these creations. These beads are so tiny and they are literally royal looking. Um, absolutely wonderful and she's constantly changing out her work and coming up with new designs and color combinations for us. A number of us do own her work including Stephen and myself and it's just really nice to have her create something that is completely different than what anybody else is doing and like I said it's just it's very interesting unique and intricate work and we're just we're really privileged to have all those talented folk from within our own area so we really enjoy that well I wish to thank you very much for coming by the shop and allowing me the opportunity to let you know about our local artists about our fair trade our association with the art gallery next door Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center and I certainly hope that you will come back and see us sometime if you have any other questions, you can just give us a call or check us out at PortsmouthArtsCenter.com. Let's wrap up today's show with a look at a new tourism video that shows all there is to see and do in Old Town Portsmouth. Welcome to Portsmouth, Virginia, a waterfront community that invites you to discover our fascinating history, family fun, outdoor recreation, arts, entertainment, shopping, dining, and colorful special events. Located in the heart of coastal Virginia in the region known as Hampton Roads, Portsmouth is close to Virginia Beach, Norfolk, and Williamsburg. In fact, it's this unique location on one of the world's deepest natural harbors where our story begins. In 1752, merchant and ship owner Colonel William Crawford laid out plans for a new town on the banks of the Elizabeth River that he named in honor of Portsmouth, England. Thanks to Portsmouth's deep natural harbor, the Gosport Shipyard was founded here in 1767. Shipbuilding was the high-tech industry of that time, and Portsmouth quickly became a center of maritime trade in colonial America. As the town grew, wealthy ship owners and sea captains built homes and churches along the waterfront in what is now known as Old Town. During the Revolutionary War, British troops seized Portsmouth because of the strategic importance of the shipyard. But unlike other captured American towns that were burned to the ground, Portsmouth was spared, and that's how Old Town survived. 
Today, Old Town is the site of one of America's largest collections of architecturally noteworthy 18th and 19th century homes. Visitors stroll Old Town's tree-lined streets to see more than 200 carefully preserved homes and churches. And Old Town's unique specialty stores and one-of-a-kind restaurants make for an enjoyable place to spend the day. But Old Town is more than just a pleasant place to take a stroll. Today, it is home to major attractions that delight the whole family. The Children's Museum of Virginia is the state's largest and most awesome kids' kingdom. Kids step inside a world where bubbles grow large and the forces of nature spark their imagination. They can be a farmer, banker, scientist, or a stargazer. Adults will think they are having an educational experience, but the kids are just having lots of fun. Learn about our maritime history at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard Museum, where you'll find beautiful ship models, military artifacts, and exhibits spanning 250 years of Portsmouth's history. Built in 1915, the lightship Portsmouth was equipped with a beacon that guided mariners off the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. Tour the ship's quarters to learn how the men of the lightship service lived during their months at sea. The Fresnel lens on display at the waterfront came from a lighthouse that served Virginia's eastern shore in the 1800s. The Hill House Museum in Old Town is an excellent example of an English basement home that was constructed in the federal style for a wealthy ship's captain. As the site of a former plantation, Portsmouth's African-American history dates back to near the very founding of the Virginia colony. Before the Civil War, Portsmouth was a pivotal stop on the Underground Railroad, the network of citizens and churches that helped enslaved people escape to the North and freedom. The Emanuel AME Church in Old Town protected runaway slaves as they waited to be spirited aboard ships heading to New England and Canada. The Portsmouth Community Colored Library Museum brings African American history alive through books, artifacts, hands-on activities, and interactive programs designed to promote pride, cultural diversity, activism, and understanding. The Railroad Museum of Virginia delights rail fans with an early 1900s Norfolk and Western steam locomotive, dining car, caboose, and depot-style platform. The Jewish Museum and Cultural Center houses rare artifacts and exhibits that tell the history of the Hampton Roads Jewish community. If the arts and entertainment are more your style, you've come to the right place. The Portsmouth Pavilion is a riverfront performing arts center that hosts some of the biggest names in show business. With 6,500 seats and a waterfront ambiance, it's the perfect setting for a night of unforgettable entertainment. Housed in the historic 1846 courthouse, the Portsmouth Art and Cultural Center presents visual art exhibits, lectures, classes, and performances that bring the works of world-renowned artists to Old Town. The galleries of the Visual Arts Center of Tidewater Community College feature exhibitions by regional and national artists, as well as students and faculty members. If you're looking for some outdoor fun, you'll find it here. Portsmouth is located at mile marker zero of the famous Intracoastal Waterway. Thousands of sailors and cruisers drop anchor here during their annual migration north and south. And if you would like to get a good look at the Navy ships anchored in the Elizabeth River, hop aboard the ferry that connects Old Town with downtown Norfolk. By the Wee Golf Course is one of the nation's finest public courses. Its soaring pines and immaculate playing conditions earned a four-star rating from Golf Digest magazine. If you prefer to hike or kayak, Hoffler Creek Wildlife Preserve is just the ticket. This 142-acre wildlife preserve provides a thriving habitat for plants and animals native to Virginia. Paradise Creek Nature Park is a 40-acre urban park of restored forest and wetlands with two and one-half miles of hiking trails. And if you're looking for the perfect site for your group's next meeting, the Renaissance Portsmouth Norfolk Waterfront Hotel is one of the region's finest. Its waterfront location and outstanding service will be a hit with your guests. And finally, Portsmouth loves a good party. Our major annual festivals will put you in the spirit. A year-round lineup of events focus on entertainment, art, music, and food. Just pick your passion and join the fun. Thank you for discovering the new Portsmouth. 
please come visit us soon.